Hey guys, welcome to Wrestling Days and welcome to this review of night one of WrestleMania. So we actually started with a brand new then, now, forever signature and uh, it was really cool. It was nice to see it like updated, uh, something different uh, and I thought it looked really, really good. I haven't broken it down or gone back to it, but uh, it was a nice way to start some kind of a talking point like straight out of the gates. Uh, then obviously Obviously, we got a shot of the arena of the stadium uh, with all the people inside. And uh, that looked really, really good as well. One thing I would say about tonight is it really felt like we had stripped back. Like the pyro felt like it had really been stripped back. Uh, and obviously, we didn't get loads of epic entrances. We certainly got bits, but we didn't get anything that massive. Um, uh, obviously, the rocks felt like the biggest of course uh maybe we'll get some stuff tomorrow uh but yeah it definitely felt like we had pulled back on the production budget the prime bottle in the ring thankfully uh was just kind of black and white and at times i really didn't notice it um, I hate saying that because I really don't like the sponsorship in the ring thing. I mean, I've been watching wrestling since the early 90s. It's just not something I'm used to. But I will admit that I stopped noticing throughout the show. It might be different if it was a brightly colored uh, bottle like we feared it was going to be. And it's worth mentioning as well that the prime bottle and logo was on the turnbuckle pads. Uh, and it's worth mentioning as well that a lot of these matches were sponsored and some of the sponsors were horrific. Like, I think the Usos match was sponsored by Dude Wipes, which is quite distracting, right? And also there was another one. I think the six-woman tag match was, like, sponsored by some chicken thing. So I do find those sponsors at times quite distracting. There was one match, I forget which one it was, that was sponsored by the vodka. And actually the colours were quite subdued. Uh, it kind of fitted in. That really didn't offend in any way. So the sponsorships feel quite clunky. Thankfully, the prime one wasn't as bad as feared. I still don't like it. I still don't want it. But it wasn't as bad as the one that was unveiled, right? So I will give it that. We did get the national anthem from uh, Coco, and uh, it was fine. Uh, I can't say it's my favorite. I mean, some of the WrestleMania national anthems in the past have been done like Ray Charles. They've been done by, you know, some of the absolute great Aretha Franklin. You know, they've been done by some of the absolute greats. I am, I'm not aware of Coco, um, so I can't really comment but um, it was fine. It was okay. Uh, and then we went straight into Triple H coming out. So it's time to play the game. Triple H made his way down. He just came down to the ring, kind of took a moment to sort of soak it in. You know, you could see him really trying to enjoy the moment. Mate came down to the ring and basically said, welcome to a new era, right? He said before, like, it's all gonna start here. He said that at the kickoff show earlier that uh, this is just the end of the beginning and the new era starts here this weekend and um i would say that for a lot of this show it didn't feel that way but that main event that main event really did a lot of heavy lifting <laughs> in my opinion anyway so Becky came out and she came out with a, a book entrance. She did reveal this in the build that she was going to have a book entrance. So it was a CGI uh, copy of her book and uh, certain lines were highlighted. It was good. And you could hear her reading it out. You could hear her reading out the parts of her book. She would then kind of walk through the book, make her way down to the ring. Uh, a lot of really nice ring gear and entrance gear uh certainly a few come to mind like the judgment day um they were both wearing masks damien had like spikes sticking out of his mask uh the new day they had a apollo and rocky theme going on so there was some nice uh ring gears uh, i can't say anything that massively blew me away becky's looked just nice really uh, it had writing around, like, the middle, uh, which is kind of nice. And it was very, like, red, white, I think, with black elements. Dakota looks stunning. 
She looked like a sexy member of Demolition, right? Which is what we've all been waiting for, in all fairness. So, yeah, there was some uh, nice stuff here. So Becky emerged from this uh, walking through, from this book entrance. And uh, I don't know that we, if we've got... There you go. You can see what Becky's wearing there. She's standing in the ring. Uh, Mommy has arrived. Let's see if we can just play this. Uh, because at first, I thought this dude was Rhea Ripley. We just cut over and I thought this dude was Rhea. I was like, is that Rhea screaming at me? Because, uh, like, he shouts away and then Rhea actually emerges. And uh, these two, like, uh, look at that. So she came out to, I think they were called Motionless in White. So uh, she came out there. These two uh, played Rhea to the ring. This Rhea got one of the best entrances. Uh, she made her way uh, down to the ring. Uh, and then, uh, you know, they both got their intros. Samantha Irvin uh, did every one of the uh, announcements and uh, we got underway. And honestly, this match, it, it wasn't going straight out of the gates. It took a little bit of time for it to kind of warm up. It didn't take too long. Just took them a little bit of time to get going. But it did get going. And I thought there was some really fun stuff so uh, there was uh, the the ending came with a riptide into the corner, followed by a riptide in the ring, and it was a win for Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley retained. I can tell you that seventy one percent of people said it was a great match. So our scoring is a bad match, an okay match, a great match an all-time match um and we did have an all-time match on this show it wasn't this one though this came out 71 percent great so uh there we go uh, there's triple h backstage he said safe to say that motionless in white band has solidified their place in the wwe family what an awesome performance to help kick things off for the women's world title so there we go, Rhea Ripley, and still retaining her championship clean, no outside interference, pretty solid offering, good open. People were on board, everything was kind of cooking, and uh, there you can see them just battling away. So up next was the six pack challenge. DIY came out with all this like DX inspired entrance, right? Which was really, really fun. So uh, DX just went into full degeneration X mode. DIY just went into full degeneration X modes. New Day came out and they had obviously channeled their uh, inner Rockies, inner Rocky fans, as we said. Xavier dressed as Apollo, uh, Kofi was dressed as as rocky then uh look at the masks on the judgment day this is how the judgment day came out so they made their way down to the ring and then look we were underway there you can see xavier in his uh apollo inspired gear uh we had the belts suspended above the ring and uh what you had to do is grab both sets of belts if you only grabbed one set of belts then you you won those and then the match continued as you tried to get the other set of belts so uh we were battling away um it is worth mentioning that the new catch republic came out to awesome truth graphics by mistake so there was a little bit of a botch there uh, Tyler Bate with an airplane spin to Finn Balor. Um, and Hard Truth was looking for the tag during this match. And uh, he thought that he had got the pin. He, he covered. He counted the three. He sort of started celebrating. Miz had to get in and tell him, no, no, no. We've got to get the belts. Uh, that was a fun, classic R-Truth type moment. Um, and basically, we do get our first champions. So uh, we do get the first belts being retrieved. And it was by A-Town Down Under. A Town Down Under, Grayson, Austin Theory, they they get the SmackDown titles, which is big. That is a big, big moment. 
So those belts were uh, claimed. The match continued. J.D. McDonough was trying to help Judgment Day. He appeared out of nowhere. One of the ladders was really broken, looked like it was going to buckle, right? There was lots of drama. And, uh, and then, of course, we get the moment where R-Truth climbs up the ladder and claims the other belts as the crowd are cheering him on, urging him to climb the ladder. And uh, there we go. Two sets of tag team champions. Grayson Waller, Austin Theory for the SmackDown titles. And R-Truth and The Miz for the uh, Raw titles. So we've got two sets of uh, tag champs. The belts have once again been separated um i'm guessing they will change these designs we are slowly seeing the belts change their designs um i'm not sure they're going to want to run with these we've had these designs for a long time and honestly i think we can do better the other thing as well is that the wwe logo on them is not that big and uh, if you're going to parade around with them, I think you're going to want a WWE logo to be quite sizable somewhere. So uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we change these titles. So scores, it was great. 81%. That was even better, according to our community, than the first match. First match, great 71. This one, great 81, right? So things were going good. Things were going good. Then we had the Fireflies, right? Uh, and we'll play this. Let's uh, uh, pause that there. And we'll see if we can find the Fireflies. So look at that. So those are the Fireflies at WrestleMania, which was a lovely moment. Lovely, lovely moment. So we got the Fireflies. Uh, Jordan Burroughs was shown in the crowds. I don't know who he is. I think he plays football. So he was shown. Um, and then we went over to our next match. Our next match was Ray and Andrade taking on Santos and Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Um, not loads to this match, to be honest. I mean, there were some decent moments, some hot tags and things like that. Uh, it got a 93% good rate in OK Good. So very much a step down from where we had been. No special entrance for Ray. No special entrance for Dirty Dom. Like, they just walked out to their music, you know? Um, Ray apparently had Philadelphia Eagles-themed gear. I don't know much about them, but he had mentioned it in the build that he was going to have Philadelphia Eagles-themed gear. So uh, I can't, like, give you the details on it because I don't know them. Um, but out of nowhere, these two guys arrived to help the baby faces. Two absolute monsters of men. I mean, honestly, it was like AOP-esque. But um, it turned out to be uh, Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson. Again, if you watch American football, which is... Not that popular over here in the UK. I mean, it's got a following, but I think you've really got to be into it to be watching it. Uh, it's not something that you'll necessarily stumble across on TV over here. Um, then obviously these are going to be massive names for you, but uh, they don't mean a great deal uh, or actually anything to me. Uh, so they got involved. Um, Philly Strong. And so it meant that Ray and Andrade... Uh, had picked up the victory. So here, I mean, if we can play this and I can pause this, uh, these masked guys here uh, jump over. They get involved and uh, there they are in the ring. They were both wearing masks there on the outside. Look, two giant guys and uh, they come in. They help the baby faces get the uh, victory. And uh, there's just this big celebration. But you can see, like, how it looked on TV with the crowds and everything. This match was sponsored by Agurus uh, Frescus, which is like a Minute Maid thing drink. So uh, that was the sponsor for this one. And... Um, yeah, you know, it got 93% good. It was definitely a step down from where we had been. But um, nothing disastrous. You know, next up was Jimmy and Jay. And this really felt like we were going to get things back to where they had been. Sadly, not. I think this might be maybe the most disappointing match. I don't know what happened. 
I really don't know what happened. And maybe other people might have a different perspective. But um, little Wayne, right? He did the entrance or helped do the entrance. He didn't really do a great deal. Came out with a few lines. Didn't do loads. And um, Jay kind of then just came out and they both went down to the ring together. So he helped with Jay's intro jimmy didn't get anything for his he just made his way down to the ring uh here's triple h he said i'm confident we still haven't even scratched the surface on what grayson and theory are capable of this is going to be one entertaining smackdown tag team championship reign so there we go a picture of him with the new smackdown tag team champions so uh, Shawn Michaels just thanking people for the biggest stand and deliver ever and the largest crowd in NXT history. Can't wait to see what WrestleMania has in store. So there was um, uh, this was Jimmy making his way down to the ring. There's the new uh, Raw Tag Team Champs. The truth is these two are awesome. A well-deserved victory for Mike and our truth at WrestleMania. Right, and uh, we were underway with this match. Again, there wasn't loads to it, and it really didn't get going, I didn't think. They were kind of exchanging uh, shots on each other. Like, ask, come on, give me your best shot kind of a thing. And um, the crowd kind of were just sort of observing. Then we had Jimmy saying, look, I'm sorry, I was wrong, but it just felt, really didn't feel believable. I mean, you had to be really gullible to kind of fall for that. And um, he delivered a super kick to uh, Jay. Uh, thankfully, Jay was able to come back from it and he was able to get the victory. This thing for me really didn't get out of first gear. Uh, this got a 79% good rating, right? This is well below the Ray and Andrade versus Santos Dominic match. This is easily the worst match. I think it ends up the worst match of the night by a good distance as well. Jimmy versus Jay did not deliver. And, you know, it's funny because we sort of got a glimpse of these two at the start of the Royal Rumble. And there was concerns then when it was number one versus number two in the Royal Rumble. And they only had a couple of minutes. But even then, people were like, I'm really not sure about this. I'm really not sure. I really don't know that this is, you know, going to work. For some reason, the chemistry didn't seem quite right, but it seemed crazy to just judge them on a few minutes. But um, we got the match and it didn't work, in my opinion. And the opinion of the people that were joining us for the watch along, so. Uh, and there we go, winner, Jay Uso. Then we got this uh, entrance, this geisha entrance. So uh, we got this with uh, these geisha girls. They covered up the camera with their fans. And then uh, out came Damage Control. And you can see Dakota looking absolutely stunning. And uh, with Asuka with a face paint and Kyrie Sane as they all made their way. Look at the hair on Kyrie down the side. Uh, made their way down to the ring. Then, of course, we got the entrance for Bianca and Naomi and Jade. And it's a hard one to explain, to be honest. There's a platform, and they're all on this platform. And this platform descends kind of down next to the entrance stage. And there you can see, I think we had Jade in, like, silver, platinum, right? I was saying white on the stream, and people were like, no, no, it's silver, it's platinum. Then you had uh, Bianca in, like, silver, platinum, but with some gold elements. And then you had Naomi all in gold. So there's Jade. She had this line going straight down the center. Uh, there was uh, Naomi. They each got their own little entrance. There was Bianca. She looked like Data out of Star Trek with this visor as she was, like, coming down. But that's what they were all wearing, and they all look great. I mean, Jade looks a million billion dollars, as always, as they kind of made their way down to the ring. So uh, those, those uh, were the three uh, faces. Uh, damage control in the backgrounds. So, uh, as we said, look at the visor there. Just like a sexy data. So, uh, they made their way down. And honestly, the girls didn't get much time. There really was not much to this. But they still managed to get an 88% good rate. And that was 9% better than the Jimmy J match. Um, this was Asuka misting Kyrie by mistake. Then Bianca whipping Asuka. And it sounded horrific. 
the whip. I don't know if they added any sort of sweetener to it. Like any sweetener in the sound sounded horrific. Um, it's Jade that pins Dakota. Jade pins Dakota. It's a win for the face team. So here, uh, when Philly takes over, you're bound to see some Eagles, Lane Johnson, Jason Kelsey. So there we go. Triple H being dwarfed by these two mountains uh, next to him. Uh, and there we go. Jade Cargill has arrived. And uh, the face team get the win. So there we go. Winners, Bianca, Naomi, and Jades. Up next, Intercontinental Champion, Gunther, defends against Sami Zayn. This was amazing, this backstage bit. So we joined Sami backstage with his wife and his kids. And he was like, look, I don't want you to see what's about to happen. Uh, so they go off, right? He kisses his wife and they go off. Uh, then as he's walking, he bumps into Chad. And Chad said, look, I want you to, you know, go out there on your own. And uh, Sammy's like, okay. Uh, he's like, but you've been by my side throughout this. And he's like, no, 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 you've never needed me. I mean, it did have that real Rocky feel to it. You know, that Rocky moment of like, you never needed me. You always had it in you. The problem was people didn't want Sammy. They wanted Chad to be the one. So it didn't really land with Chad saying to Sammy, like, you just had to believe in yourself. You you could always do this. It it It, it felt weird. It felt the the wrong way round. It should have been like Sammy saying it to Chad. You know, Chad has tried and failed before. And so it should be Chad that had trained with Sammy to try and, like, you know, improve. It, it was the wrong way round. Uh, then he bumps into uh, Kevin just before he goes out. And Kevin, like, really G's him up. You've got this, you know. And it's all one of those one shots like we've seen on Raw, where we just follow him straight out. He goes through Gorilla, through the curtain, out into the crowd. Brilliant. Brilliant. The camera shots on this this bit, brilliant. And uh, Gunther, the ring general, he uh, made his way down with uh, Ludwig and uh, Giovanni Vinci. I don't think they stuck around. I didn't see them again. So I don't think they stuck around. Uh, and we were underway. We were underway. And uh, this was really fun this was really fun this actually got the same rating as the tag ladder match it got 81 percent great so uh at this point i think it's up there tied for the best match of the night with the ladder match um and this was needed as well because the ray match had sort of took us down uh then we had had the jimmy and jay match which had really underwhelmed and took us down further then the women didn't get much to pick us back up, you know? So we improved, but we were still pretty down. We needed something here to really get things lifted. And thankfully we did. We did get back lifted up. Uh, and wow, you know, we got 81% great rating. 81% great rating. But bigger than that, we got a new intercontinental champion so the way that this works and i really need to see what he does at the end right um let's have a look is this the closing sequence because uh gunther goes up splashes sammy right splashes him now gunther goes over to the side this is where he grabs him and it looks like he's going to go for a suplex he doesn't hit the suplex instead he gets him up and then drives him down in the moment, it looked like he had made a mistake and he had slipped and he had dropped him. But it's been pointed out that this brain buster is a move that El Generico used to do. And so we think that it was on purpose. But in the moment, I couldn't. It, it looked like it was a bit botchy and I couldn't see what he had driven him down to. So I'm very interested to find that answer out here and now. So he's got him up. Look, it looks like he's going to suplex him over, right? Uh, instead, he... What does he do? So he picks him up, right? He's got him up. And then he drives him down onto what? <laughs> I don't know what. He drives him down onto some... Like, the turnbuckle is here. Gunther's head is over here. There's some people thinking it's the turnbuckle. There's some people thinking that it's the shoulder. I wonder if it's just the top rope. I wonder if he did a brain buster onto the top rope, maybe? 
He comes up, down, but what does he... What does he drive him into? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know. I will have to just watch it. But even then, having just gone through it, then I'm not sure I'll get my answer. So honestly, in the moment, at full speeds, it felt like it had gone wrong, right? Uh, and then he followed. So Gunther stumbles to the corner. Sammy then delivers a halluva. Uh, Gunther goes down. And there we go. This is the moment. One, two, three. 666 day title reign comes to an end and Sammy is the new Intercontinental Champion, right? Mixed feelings on it because I wanted Sammy to become a world champion, not really looking for him to go back to the mid cards. An amazing achievement to be the one that ends this historic title reign, right? I mean, maybe we're trying to build him back up. It's such a shame because we had him where we wanted him when he was in the bloodline. And we sort of, we got a title match out of it, but we sort of threw it away in a way. It's hard to criticize because obviously Roman's story is still going as a result. So it's hard to criticize. But, you know, it's left Sammy in this weird place now where he's a mid-card champion now. I mean, look, winning the IC title, there should never be any shade thrown on that. But it's just not where Sammy fans wanted him to be. I love the fact he's beaten Gunther, but I want that to be a world title. He's already won the IC title before. I wanted that to be a world title. So, And a lot of people wanted this to be Chad's. So it gets 81% great rating. It was a lovely moment. He goes over, he embraces his wife. She was in the front row. That's how winning is done. Sammy pulls off the miracle in Philadelphia, and it's a celebration at uh, WrestleMania 40. Uh, dude wipes on the uh, ring as well. So there we go. And new WrestleZania. Sammy Zayn gets it done. I mean, you can never be down on winning the IC title at WrestleMania. But I would imagine even Sammy is thinking, I want that world title. I want that world title. I'm going to carry this belt with pride. You know, think of the champions that's held it before. But I want that world title. We know that money in the bank is in Canada. I want him getting that money in the bank. I'd much, I'll, I'll be much more invested in him winning the briefcase than I was him winning this, actually. Which is crazy when you think about what he's just achieved. Ended the longest reign but there we are so uh that was that then we had nick oldis and adam pierce they announced 700 no seventy-two thousand five hundred and forty-three. so seventy-two thousand five hundred and forty-three was the attendance this is where i was waiting for legends to come down nothing didn't get any didn't get any I don't remember any returns, any surprises, any legends. It felt really stripped back. The pyro didn't feel as epic as what we've seen. The entrances didn't feel as epic as what we've seen. And this really added to, I would say at this point, people being disappointed, really. We had one match left to go. People weren't really in a great place mentally here. There was a lot of complaining going on in the live stream. The crowd sounded quite quiet as well. I don't think they were mic'd up very well. I'm sure they made noise and if you was there, I'm sure you'd be like, no, no, it was loud, it was rocking. It wasn't coming across on TV. And I think part of it is the stadium and the noise goes straight up and out, doesn't it? It doesn't bounce around a ceiling, you know, like an arena it just goes up and out. So that was uh, another issue as well. And the advertising was uh, uh, annoying in places. And Jimmy and Jay hadn't quite delivered. And the tag match hadn't quite delivered. And the women didn't get long. And yeah, so at this point, it was like, mm, this main event's going to need to do some heavy lifting if we're going to get a, you know, a good score out of this. Well, thank God. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Thank God. Because uh, come off the hour. Um, new family photo just dropped, said motionless in white. There we go. New family picture. He's one of them now. Uh, so, yeah, thank God we did get uh, this main event. It's the main event we needed, and we did get it. So, Seth came out. I mean, an amazing, outrageous. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He comes down with this. I mean, he puts on a show, doesn't he? Before he even gets in the ring, he puts on a show. Look at that. Massive bow. 
as he made his way down. There was what Cody was wearing. So there was Seth. There was uh, Cody. They were in the ring awaiting uh, the uh, tribal chief and the final boss. It's official. Right, here's uh, the final boss. Electrifying this was. Absolutely electrifying. So we had uh, like 99% complete, 100% final boss loading. We had flames shooting up from the ground. There he was with the People's Championship. And uh, all these lightning uh, CGIs. And we got a shot, actually, and he was standing in the lightning. I wonder if we can find that. I don't think we can go back to it, unfortunately. Oh, well, there we go. Uh, on the ground was a Brahma bull in flames and the rock was standing in it, right? Holding up that championship as the flames kind of were shooting up around him. It was good. It was one of the, probably the most epic uh, entrance and uh, he made his way down. Roman just came down with Heyman. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Out, out, uh, you know, rock definitely outshone Roman in the entrance front. So uh, he came down. Uh, Rhea Ripley said always on top uh, so there we were there was uh, the bloodline there was Cody and Seth uh, we were good to go and we were underway eight years in the making The Rock is back inside a WWE ring so uh, he tagged in Rock and Cody it was uh, it was good stuff I would say that this took a little bit of time to get going actually took a little bit of time to get going um, but we really did start to cook. This was great. Key moment in this match was Rock saying to the referee, don't you dare count us out whilst we're out the ring. If you do, you are fired. He said to the ref, you're fired. So the ref couldn't, you know, there was no count outs that the ref could count. There was no DQs. You know, this all of a sudden became a no DQ match, no count outs. It just became pinfall submission. That was it, right? Um, and here, look, you can see Roman with that guillotine. And uh, Cody goes down. Rock even grabs his legs. And he's, like, pulling on him and everything to put more pressure. And you could see the ref was like, oh, God, this is clearly a DQ, but I don't want to lose my job. And uh, obviously, we had uh, Cody survive that. We had Mama Rhodes at ringside. He went and grabbed the belt. Rock had the belt, the Mama Rhodes belt. And he said to Mama Rhodes, I'm going to get your tears on this. She, she was like, BS. She was like, BS, you will. Um, this thing just kept building and building and building and building. And it was the main event we needed. Loads of dramatic moments. Crossroads late saves kick outs superman punches roman accidentally spearing the rock which was an epic moment love that um but when it all came uh when it all came down to it right yeah we even had uh through the announce table we even had that but when it came down to it it was uh the rock that hit the people's elbow on cody and got the one two three so that's what it came down to. Lots of cheating and bending of the rules, of course. But the, uh, what it came down to was a 1-2-3 win for the Bloodline, as was probably expected. And, of course, uh, they had this shot. They made sure that Cody was in the ring, gutted, with uh, Rock and Roman in the background. Here you can see WWE saying deja vu. That shot exactly like the shot that we saw last year exactly the same and and you knew it in the moment as well you knew they were framing it and it was all being done on purpose that way but uh there we go acknowledge the final boss and the tribal chief after tomorrow will he still have his belt but he might not have his is that where we're going there's a gutted cody what a moment there's uh drew watching it he said tomorrow is going to be the easiest payday of his life. Um, and there they are, look, the Rock and Roman reign supreme. 53 minutes ago at the time of recording this, and we've already been recording for 33 minutes. So uh, we've jumped onto this pretty quick and uh, to share our thoughts. And that was it. So tomorrow will be Bloodline Rules. I can tell you that this is the highest rated match of the year this got 46 percent all 
time. 46% all time. So um, this match is brilliant, amazing, uh, lots of fun. Took a little bit of time to get going, but I really enjoyed it when it did. I think it massively improves the score. I mean, without this match, I might be looking at like a 5-7, five, 5-6. Five, I think with this match, I think we get to 6-7, 5-7. That's kind of where I am. Six, seven, five, seven, night one of WrestleMania. This match definitely doing a lot of heavy lifting. I think the Sammy moment is amazing, but maybe doesn't land as hard because of the builds and it didn't feel quite right. And, you know, it is a shame. And I'm sure many of you feel different than that. It's still a great moment and it still picks up the score. But, oh, what was Jimmy and Jay all about? What was that all about? Where were the legends? Where were the legends? Where the, were the returns? Where was the surprises? Where was WrestleMania with all of the stuff that, you know, this is, this felt a bit like a stripped back WrestleMania, to be honest. You know, I'm hoping that it's all going to be pushed into tomorrow. I'm hoping we just go big tomorrow. I've no doubt that main event tomorrow delivers. Uh, and actually, tomorrow we've got Bailey EO. Tomorrow we've got Drew Seth. You know, tomorrow we've got Logan defending the United States title against Randy Orton, Kevin Owens. Like, tomorrow uh, we've got Pride against Final Testament in a street fight. Should be really fun. Tomorrow should be really good. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. So traditionally we get one really good day and one bad to so so day that's kind of how it's been in recent wrestlemanias this was the bad to so so day for me and i really believe tomorrow is the day it might be the day we see the historic title reign of roman reigns come to an end you know it might be the day that bailey gets her payback it might be the day that cody finishes his story we will be live tomorrow, all throughout the kickoff show, all throughout the main show, all throughout everything, right? We're even doing the slammies. So we will be live tomorrow. You do not want to miss it, man. You do not want to miss it. Make sure that even if you just drop by, even if you just swing by to share your thoughts, say hello, make sure that you do stop by. Um, I want to try and speak to as many people as possible. And honestly, there might not be a dry eye in the house. Whatever happens in that main event, whatever happens, it's going to be emotional. Thanks for watching. Appreciate the support. Hope you enjoyed it. I really think tomorrow is bigger and better. And uh, we will see what tomorrow brings.